First, you want to make sure you have all of your materials ready, which include 2-inch Orphicast, a towel, heat gun, splinting scissors, and small blunt edge scissors. Make sure your piece of Orphicast is the right size, which should cover the length of the involved finger. Begin heating up the Orphicast material with your heat gun. If you do not have access to a heat gun, you also can use hot water. It just takes longer because the material has to dry. Flip the Orphicast over once you see the edges beginning to curl on both sides. Repeat and flip over again as many times as you need. Make sure the Orphicast is not too warm before applying to the patient's skin. Pull the material perpendicular to the fibers and stretch it out making sure you have a good stretch. The material is very flexible and has good memory. When ready, keep in mind that your working time with this material is not that long. So practicing ahead of time is key before fabricating the splint for your patient in order to ensure it fits properly and is serving its purpose. Once you have created your double layer, adhering the material together, reheat one more time, stretch the material and place the orphicast along the volar aspect of the involved finger, working dorsally and circumferentially around the patient's finger. The DIPJ should be clear for isolated flexion exercises that I will discuss later on in this video. Pull up and pinch the material dorsally along the entire finger to ensure proper fitting. Then cut any excess material along the dorsal finger, cutting away from the patient if possible. Smooth the material out along the dorsal finger before the material is completely dry and hard. Hold the PIPJ in the desired extension position that is a low load, tolerable force, and in as much extension as the patient can tolerate. Make sure the patient is able to flex the DAPJ for ORL stretching exercises. Use your small blunt edge scissors to cut and round out any sharp edges or to make any adjustments you may need. The splint should be worn for one week if possible for the best results. Have your patient come in weekly to measure improvements with PIPJ extension and to change the splint while also checking the skin for any irritation or redness. Your patient should not attempt to the remove the splint and should not immerse the splint in water. The goal is to get as close to zero degrees of extension of the PIPJ as possible. Then consider transitioning to a nighttime splint to maintain the extension gained at the PIPJ.